here's somewhere we've never been before and it's a wet horrible day so we thought we'd go to the national motorcycle museum choice of doors <laughs> is a door is it an automatic, automatic one door it's not automatic no. <laughs> I've always said we should get a motorcycle sidecar. What, on a day like this it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Through these doors. And all the, what did you say, 800 bikes? 800 in bikes, five holes, wow. Well, where do you start? You start with that one. one. Oh, it's a tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> 1898. Oh, wow. Good heavens. I don't think I'm going to film all 800 bikes, but that's something else, isn't it? That looks quite comfortable, that seat, doesn't you it? You said it's three and a half horsepower. Three and a half? Yeah. Gosh. 1902. That must have been quite fast. Didn't I mean, the, been the, used that's, to that's eight really. Horse. A, yeah, that's really a car there, isn't it? Yeah, we could have been around in 1904, we could have had one of these, couldn't we? Yeah. Oh, wow. There's loads of them. It's been the in thing. Oh, it must have been, wasn't it? That's what you'd have. It's obviously a lot cheaper than buying a car. This is 500cc, this one. Wow. Well, it's probably about two horsepowers. <laughs> Three it's speed got a counter box, shaft. Yeah. It's priced new, not exceeding ninety pounds. <laughs> like the, the radiator, that'd keep you warm, wouldn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Oh my goodness. You might as well just go around clockwise, I suppose. All the fifties bikes here at the Royal Enfield. Francis Barnett. I mean, we're not huge motorcycle fans, but this is fabulous if you are. Nineteen o three, made in Belgium for the East London Rubber Company. <laughs> That's basically a bicycle with an engine, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Which is what a lot of them were. Wow. This, this one here is five horsepower. Difficult. These are Rudges, aren't they? That's a famous name. Nineteen oh seven Rex V twin, five horsepower. Different names you've never heard of, really, aren't they? Pick. Mm. Yeah. But here you've got a Royal Enfield. Yeah. Now you're coming into the First World War, aren't you? 1914. 1914, yeah. And the pictures at the back. Can you see those? Bill Doran, I don't know, 1951 AGS Porcupine. This one's even older, this is 1929. These are the 1914 bikes. Oh yeah, typical race meeting photographed in 1929. They're just riding around the streets, aren't they? What a collection. Lots of them out, this sort of bike outside the factory, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 1918 Rover 700 Jap V twin. Yeah, they're road testing those back there in that photo, 1915 in Birmingham. In Birmingham, yeah. Off of the holidays on their Sunbeam F7. 
you know, it's the BSA factory, the largest motorcycle manufacturer for Vortigo during World War II. Let's look at this little Stafford Mobile Pup Scooter. <laughs> it's great. The auto, yeah, this is the Auto Glider. Wow, look at, the, look, at the, look at the chain drive there. Good grief. The 1920s then? Well, yeah, as we were 1914. Look at this one there. Oh, the seat. Strange. <laughs> it's uncomfortable that. Well, you got was. somewhere to put your shop in. Yeah. It's a Renault Reynolds runabout. Rather odd looking vehicle. The design was very practical. It was a tra platform for carrying goods, which is the answer to the commercial traveller's prayer. Sit with a second seat on the platform for a tandem mounted passenger. Look at the controls. Brakes down on the left hand side because it says brake on it. Yeah. Yeah, you've got other brakes on there as well. No famous bike of the Rudge. It's Jack Brett on the TT Works Norton with his face ridged by the something or other. <laughs> Can't read that. Ramsey. More rudges over here. A rudge multi. It's almost like war covers, this one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's 1923. And that would have been Martin. Yeah. The headlight up on the handlebars. Yeah. It's yes, definitely seemed to be getting bigger, like that one there. Yeah, oh yeah, the bikes were getting bigger, definitely. 1024, less cycle, more motor. Yeah. Difficult to take all this in, isn't it? Mmm. Yeah, moving up, 1927 now. Oh, Rudge Whitworth, 500cc. JW V twin. Yeah, you can see the, the tw twin engine there. Royal Enfield. Great name, a Scott Squirrel, <laughs> 298cc. Triumph, the new 498cc Triumph was introduced at the Olympia show in December 1929. Created so much interest among the buying public for this class of popular machine. Closely followed the existing 350cc model CO. The model CTT was road tested by the motorcycling in March 1930 and fully satisfied tester in all respects as a worthy product of a firm with a household name. Yeah. These are obviously the, just so many manufacturers as well, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. A Scott TT replica. Wow. And a rally. Yeah. Reynolds special. So how much this lot must be worth? No. Mm -hmm. 1933-600cc Panther Model 100 Red Wing. Made in Yorkshire. No nonsense, eh? It's 
called SOS, that one. Yeah. These are British SOS. Yeah, it says what that stands for on that one. So obviously superior. Not save our souls. <laughs> drum brakes. A new Imperial 1937 single cylinder, single cylinder overhead valve. And the Rudge holster. <laughs> Bolt on power for your bike. Yeah, so that was a bolt-on power pack for your cycle. <laughs> a 49cc bolt-on power pack. A bit like those switch bikes today, aren't they, where you get electric bolt-on. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's 1939. And 1947 Douglas. So these are post-war now. Definitely got bigger, didn't they? I notice the seats are gradually getting bigger. Yeah, well, that's a little bit out of uh, time here. It's a 1978 Silk Model 700 twin cylinder two stroke. Yeah. The radiator on the front of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. A lot of them had the front radiator, didn't they? Some of them are leaking a little bit there. Yeah, a lot of them got a tray underneath. Yeah. Right, on to the 40s then. Look at this, Vincent here. The worker in the engine there. Detail. Exide battery on the back of it. That's where you'd sit, Jen, back there. Lovely, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get much of a seat on these, did you? No. <laughs> it's like no, an that's afterthought. What I noticed. They're like the, You've like got a great big... big comfy seat for the uh, yeah. rider. Not much for the pillion. Oh, you see, what's starting to happen in 1949 is you're starting to get the longer seats, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, that's right. I assume that is. Yeah, that must have been it. Bigger, disc, di bigger drum brakes as well, look at that. Well, it's obviously... Um, so this is a... 1000cc Vincent HRD Racing Rapide. Yeah. Campaigned in the Manx Grand Prix that year by the late Chris Hayden. And he finished the lap of the punishing mountain course but did so at an average speed of 90.25 miles an hour. So we've gone from three and a half horsepower over there yeah. to that's 55. Yeah, 55 horsepower. Yeah, another Vincent. This is a Vincent Shadow, uh, Vincent Black Shadow Series C. All the cups and things here. A Vincent Comet, Comet Touring. Obviously, we're thinking about people who want to do touring, weren't they? Mm. You're starting to get a windshield as well. Yeah. Black prints. Yeah, again, Vincent's 1000 Vincent Rapide Series D. So that was the final Rapide. This one is the Black Prince. Yeah, so you've got quite a bit of protection there, haven't you? Quite a, oh, and it's all fared as well, look. Yeah. So a bit of streamlining. Very nice, that. What is it? Isn't it Yeah. So this is into the 60s. Look at this. You can hardly see any engine here. There's the Vel Velocet. Boxes on the back, all fared. 
twin headlights. All of 192 cc. I bet that weighed a bit. For 192 cc. Mm. Some of these are late 50s here. Yeah, the Velocets there. The Norton. Yeah, the Norton. Nineteen fifty four five hundred CC Norton Dominator eighty eight. Yeah. Next to this strange looking thing, this is a Douglas three hundred and fifty CC Dragonfly. Oh no, wait a minute, sorry, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm gonna say that's not I never got a three hundred CC. No, that's a nineteen fifty five cycle master. Yeah, looking at that, so it's got a genius design that in, originated on the continent was built in the UK, a cycle master wheel, single cylinder, two stroke engine, complete with fuel tank, spoked into a heavy, heavy duty rim, place the rear wheel of a pedal cycle, providing cheap means of transport in the austere 1950s. Yeah. That next to it is 1956 Douglas 350 Dragonfly. So that's as old as me. That one. Oh, some really unusual designs, aren't there? Another Velocet. Look at that little thing. That's a motorcycle for a car boot. Yeah, I can see that. Fold away, presumably. What a good idea. Mm. And go in the, boot, in the garage of your motor in that one. Huh. <laughs> right, into hole two. Hole two, A, B, A, B and C. Special displays. Oh, God, look. 1914 Plano machine gun sidecar. Good grief. Wouldn't want to mess with that, would no. you? No. <laughs> Another one here. It's a 1939 Norton Big Four military outfit. Warhorse with two wheel drive. Wow. It's quite a nice seat. Yeah, the seats look comfy. Better than that one. Yeah, I suppose so. You're a little bit low down. I think I prefer that one. You're a bit, bit lower down. Yeah, exposed, aren't you? There? Yeah. Hmm. These are all military, aren't they? So. Yeah. Another Velocet, 1940s, three. 350cc Velocet MAC MDD. We've got a 1940s Aerial. A Royal Enfield. God, that looked a bit weedy, didn't it? Mm. 125. 1941 BSA. And a Triumph. Forty-one Triumph again. Forty-two. It's one done out in desert duty. Wow. Uh, Nineteen sixty-one Triumph. That's what uh, Stephen Queen's on. Oh, is it? Yeah, but it's that number is plate. It, is it that? Worse? Is it this bike then? It says WH133 on the yeah. front of it. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a replica when they built yeah, it. This... Yeah, a Great Escape replica. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> there he is. Achtung. It's 
1987 Armstrong, presumably. Built for the army, British built, forces favourite. An Indian 700cc police model, ex New York Police Department. These are all police bikes, look at this. Norton 850 Commando, Interpol police machine. Wow, another Norton. That's quite something, that's quite a display, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Could what's be behind is. me? Look at this thing. I know. Everard's prize ales. Prize ales, so yeah. this was obviously used for delivering beer. An alter carrier delivery, delivery tricon. It's got leaf springs on the front. <laughs> That's yeah. something that would have been familiar to people in the 60s. Yeah, the AA. Next to it, the RAC. The Chatterley 54C side valve engine. Could put his hat on straight, couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and there's some older ones again. Yeah, back to 1900s again. So, holding the record for the number of finishes in the Sunbeam MCC annual Pioneer Run, it must have been able to find its own way from London to Brighton ran the first Pioneer run in 1930. Eventually completed the run 47 times. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to see here. Something in need of restoration here. An Atlas 1923 143 CC two stroke. And next to a 1902 BAT. BAT, odd name for a motorcycle, came from the first three letters of the surname of the founder of the company, S.R. Batson. <laughs> well, I think you could spend all day here if you're into your bikes. These pictures on the wall are fascinating, aren't they? riding yeah. with their gas masks on. Yeah, 1940. Yeah. There's the loading up in a box marked Hill Cove Falklands via Montevideo. <laughs> Grief. An aerial leader is another one with full fairing. That's a 1956 International Motorcycle Show. Wow. Norton there, Norton BSA. And AGS, yeah, aerial. Lucas at the top. Yeah. Yeah. All getting names long gone, aren't they? These are all aerials. Big aerial here. It's a thousand cc bike, that one. I like the colour of that one. Yeah, you like the colour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice blue, isn't Actually, it? Actually, they're all slightly different colours, are nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a green one there. Wow. More aerials. Aerials everywhere, look. Mm. Do you think they made one or two bikes? I think they did, yeah. Some of the older ones here, 1904. 
quite a mixture of bikes here. I've got a 65, model 33. AJS down here. One at the back there. Carburetors. Got them all in uh, grouped together. Coventry Eagle. That's something I must say now I've never heard of. Nineteen twenty-eight Coventry Eagle one thousand flying eight. To appeal to speed men, it says. Cotton. Alphabetical, aren't they? These and Clino, Clement, and Centaur. Again, that was a bolt-on cycle. How did that work then? Oh, it's a an extra drive to the pedals. To the, it's like a pulley. Yeah, a great big uh, pulley wheel on the back. Incredible. Chaterley and a Douglas. So we've got all the Nortons and Triumphs here. Nineteen sixty eight three fifty Triumph double overhead cam prototype Turner's last twin Tiger one hundred Bandit and Triumph Bandit three fifty and a Bonneville. Now they're the ones I remember. So it's a 1975 Triumph Bonneville. Someone I worked with uh, on the uh, when I was out on the vans had a, a Bonneville. Used to turn up on it. Probably something very similar to that. Mm. Look at the size of it now. Yeah, getting bigger. Four cylinder. Yep. So Triumph four cylinder, 1,000 cc prototype. This one is a Wolf 500 cc stepped piston twin cylinder. Again, prototypes. And another one. BSA is around here, or aerials. Wow. 500 cc. These are all prototype bikes, things that never made it to production. So this beast here is a 1998 1500 cc Norton Nemesis. I think you'd probably meet your nemesis on that, wouldn't you? <laughs> 225 mile an hour dream bike. Yeah, so this is 1495, 97cc double overhead camshaft V8, 235 brake horse, about 14,000 RPM. Wow. 2007 Norton rotary, using rotary engines. Brief. <laughs> a little bit smaller, 50cc <laughs> two-stroke, a little Norton. It wasn't a moped, was it? It was always a bike. I haven't got the pedals. 
Yeah, look at that alongside the nemesis. I know, no, it's a bit different. <laughs> Norton 76. Yeah. More Nortons. Absolutely beautiful. God, the size of that. Look at that. <laughs> thousand cc. 1938. You see why some of these never made it <laughs> to production. Yeah. <laughs> to all three. So this is B through to O. So you probably find the rough superiors in here. In here, yeah. BSAs. Popular round tank. Oh, loads of BSAs. Nineteen forty six, three fifty, model B thirty one. Just at the end of the war. BSA Bantam. Very popular bike. Oh, another sidecar for us. <laughs> 1951 BSA 4650. I'm sure my uncle had one of those, you know. Did he? BSA yeah. with a sidecar. Yeah. That looks very familiar. A little boot at the back of the sidecar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little boot and a very comfy looking seat. You probably have a hood for it. Yeah, what could you want? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get Jenny on a bike. <laughs> you wouldn't even go on my moped, would you? Nineteen fifty seven BSA dandy, not the success it should have been. Had a number yeah, so of shortcomings. Yeah. yeah. Quite, quite a look right, does it? Well, it's quite cute, I suppose. Uh, nineteen fifty seven BSA road rocket. <laughs> a lot of BSAs. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. She's 64. Lightning rocket. They like the word rocket, didn't they? <laughs> Road burning in comfort. And the BSA is at the back over there. Beautiful colour. Mm, isn't that? Yeah. Orange. Yeah. Like that one in the red at the back of the fire, Firebird, <laughs> it's got on the side. <laughs> mm. Firebird scrambler, that one. Oh, wow. BSA Gold Star. to the Douglases. Pictures at the back there. Harold Tozer on his BSA Trials sidecar outfit in action for yet another first place. And there's the start of the one hour race for the Do Cross Challenge trophy. <laughs> and on to the Douglases now. Yep. 
Triumph testers leaving the Meriden works. Uh, the machine's a 500cc twin cylinder for military use. And it's a transport road test machine. We're testing the road surfaces. Cars. Yeah, it's yeah. sidecar, and it's got this mechanism obviously there for testing the road surface. Huh. Different? <laughs> The economic, <laughs> 1923 e economic 165cc horizontal twin. Edwell, no. see these things never heard of. No. The Edwell 500cc perfect engine with Armstrong Armstrong hub gear. You've got a hub gear, you know, like you used to have on your bicycle at the back there. Yeah. <laughs> Nineteen oh two Excelsior. Nineteen twenty two Excelsior. God, that looked complicated. Good grief! How many holes are there? Not five, hole, I think she said. Sorry. I think she said there's five. Five. Francis Barnett. Matchless. Grief. Back to the road testing uh, thing here. We've got loads of leg room. <laughs> yeah. Big and beefy. Did we see one of those at uh, the uh, Lakeland Museum? That's I think we did, yeah. Nura car. Yeah, I think we did. It really caught on, but... It was supposed to make the steering easier or something, wasn't it? A very peculiar sort of yeah, steering. It's a bit old, isn't it? Yeah. It's made by Sheffield Simplex. low speed controllability of the earlier versions. The complaints was that the handbrake was feeble, steering lock not quite adequate, and that the rider's right trouser leg suffered from proximity to the oil pump. That was really nice, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's sitting right on top of the fuel tank as yeah. well. Yeah, well, what else we got around here? More matchless. These are matchless ones, so. Nineteen twenty eight matchless V twin. Yeah. Very popular, weren't they, in the nineteen fifties, the sidecar? Oh, yeah, yeah, Canterbury sidecars. Side valve. Looks huge, doesn't it? So, one thousand cc Hesketh Vampire V Twin Super Tourer. Scooter here. Hesketh. HZE Vetrix scooter, short lived electric rebirth. Electric. Okay. Another Indian. God. Absolutely difficult to take all this in. Is it Invictus? What we found there then? 
1923 Hawker. Sorry? A 1923 Hawker, four what and a quarter HP. After Sopwith Aviation, makers of the ABC went in liquidation. Hawker engineering is formed by Tom Sopwith. Presumably of aircraft fame. Mm. Yeah, so we're in the um, hall, where are we now? Hall four. Hall four, yeah. Yeah, and we've got surrounded by triumphs now. Triumphs and Royal Enfields. And Nortons. Nortons, look at that. Just some great pictures on the wall. You like this one here, don't we? The, yeah, uh, just like a rocket. Though. Yeah, Velocet. And oh, or if we go on one of these. Yeah. Back in the 1914s. Not today, though. <laughs> <A little laughs> you don't fancy wet. it today. Yeah. Yeah, a little terrier. You know, a terrier. 254 terrier. Tiny, isn't it? Mm. I've got a bigger brother. I could have yeah. that one, and you could have that one. Yeah, okay. So 1955. 5T speed twin. The 1958 Triumph 3TA. 21, an anniversary surprise. And the Triumph Tiger. Yeah. Beautiful. I like the Triumph at the back there. Yeah. Thunderbird. 1961, a trusty tourer. Yeah. 1966, Bonneville. Speed and style combined. Mm. More slightly. Pretty but f functional. Mm. These sort of seventies sort of square styling coming in there on the on the tank. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nineteen seventy six Tiger. Tiger 650. You know, I think uh, Trevor from Posh Cats would like this. He would, wouldn't he? Yeah. Hoping to see your moped, but I haven't yet. <laughs> Looking for my moped. <laughs> I don't Amongst think all these powerful bikes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, this, yeah, I would have preferred one of these, I think, really. 1979 Triumph T1400 Bonneville Special. Yeah, that is some bike. Repackage Bonneville. Now obviously, we've started to meet the Japanese competition here, weren't they? The Triumph Mark returned to world markets with a bang in 1991. A range of large capacity machines launched at the new factory in Hinckley, Leicestershire. It's a Trident. Well, look at that, it's a speed triple. It's bright yellow. Bright yellow, wow, well, you'd see that coming, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. And a first tri a big trial bike, uh, trail bike, trial bike, trail bike, 1994 Triumph Tiger 900. Oh, wow. The size of this. <laughs> Great. And that's a 2,300 cc Triumph Rocket 3, the Hinkley Giant. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, it's called Rocket wow. 3. 
It's like twice the size engine of any other bike, isn't it? No, we'll compare with that. <laughs> sure. Compare it to a little experimental V-twin. <laughs> These are all Royal Enfields, aren't they, here? Yeah, I think we're going to have a picture of us next to the, uh, the rocket. Are we? All right. I yeah. think so. I thought you'd make me stand in front of one of those sidecars. Let's get it in the picture. There we go. Yeah, I think we fancy this one here. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big enough, isn't it? Mm. Oil Enfields. 59. I don't know how I'm going to edit any of this. It's something you could do when you go home, isn't yeah. it? Norton's here, paramedic Norton commander. That's a rotary, a Norton rotary. All right. I've got sponsorship on them, haven't they? Do what, sorry? Oh, we've got sponsorship, John Player. John Player, yeah. So this is a 1972 John Player Norton 750 and it was formed at the Thruxton cir circuit, the team. And this is machine number 22 ridden by world champion Phil Reed to a fourth place. The machine uh, in its earliest form uh, with absent white panel on the fuel tank, plane race numbers, short inlet, short straight inlet manifolds with steeply inclined AML GP carburetors two-in-one all exhaust system and an oil radiator positioned in the seat. Oh. Achieved 152.54 miles an hour through the Daytona speed track. That's the first one with electric start in here, electric starter. Is it? Yeah, Norton 400 ES Electra. That's just some of them have sit up handlebars, don't they? So you sit more upright. Yeah. I like that one. You like this one? Mm. Nice colour. Colours, yeah. Yeah, 650 Norton Manxman. Yeah. Jenny judges them by the colour, doesn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good, this. That looks like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, doesn't it? This yeah, sidecar. I know. Wow. Wow. It's all. Hand built, isn't it? Can look at the woodwork on it. Absolutely fabulous. Too nice to take out that, wouldn't it? Yeah, you wouldn't want to go out in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good grief! All oh, these Nortons. On to hall five then. Yeah, the final hall. Competition motorcycles. So your not... moped's not going to be in here, is no, it? No, I don't think my moped will be in here. Those are all racing bikes. <laughs> Look at that. Look at Boreham in 1952. Oof. AJS's. It's a 1,000cc record attempt, so they tried to do 150 miles an hour in that, Oof. 1929. Good heavens, what have we got over here? It's the Nero 1,000cc Vincent Special. Cover the standing kilometre in 19.29 
seconds with a terminal speed of 186 miles an hour. It became the, he became the fastest man on two wheels. Oh. Wow. Super Nero at the back. Good grief. Vincent's. Which way to go around here, do we? I think it's going round, this is aerial, and it's going round to. Yeah. There's the Bruff Superior. There's a 1925 Bruff Superior there, so it's not uh, Lawrence of Arabia's, but that is a Bruff Superior. Yeah. There's another one next to it. 27. Some bike, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, there were, there were, you know, the Rolls Royce of their day, weren't they? Like to. That's not when he was killed on, was it? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Not on that one. But no, no, but uh, riding it. BSAs. Yeah. Yeah. It's gridding away. Look. I know. <laughs> Jeff Smith's Works BSA motocross machine. In the motocross bikes. What yeah. is that? Well, it'll be a speed record attempt. I don't know. Would it? So it's the Gillette Mac 3 Challenger, the fastest motorcycle of the 20th century. And it was officially timed at 330.639 miles an hour in the September 1999. And it made Richard Rocketman Brown's Mac 3 Challenger, the fastest motorcycle of the 20th century. Is that a motorcycle? <laughs> it had three rocket motors, giving the equivalent of 6,000 horsepower. <laughs> got a, that's not, not a motorcycle, that's a rocket. It's a rocket on two wheels. Oof. Good heavens. Yeah, and there's a 650 Vincent BSA sidecar racer. Look <laughs> your face. <laughs> God. Quite incredible. That's the world's fastest Norton there. 1970 750cc Norton Streamliner. Behind it is a 1700cc Golf Norton, did 271 miles an hour at Bonneville, 1974. Wow. Look at this thing behind it there. That is the, is that the one? The Norton Drag Racer Hog Slayer, drag strip legend of the 70s. Pegasus Norton top fuel drag bike. Wow. The 1969 Triumph Trident American record machine. These are some fast bikes. Yep. <laughs> this one here. <laughs> Thrust powered motorcycle. It was built by Richard Brown as a research and development to bring land speed record back to Britain used the modified Rolls-Royce Palouste turbine engine, two hybrid rockets, 183.29 miles an hour. See the turbine on? Yeah. Right <laughs> under the seat, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right behind you, the rocket, right behind you. Wow, you have to be <laughs> stuck staring bonkers to come. <laughs> 1929 Cotton Blackburn. This one looks like it's all in gold or it's bronze. Copper, it's called um, Copper Knob. Yeah. It's front is famous. This famous machine was built in a garage. It was made from a wrecked AA outfit and it was equipped with a variety of engines. It recorded the fast, fastest lap in the senior handicap at, handicap at 112 point one seven miles an hour.
Yeah, that's a nice colour for you. Yeah, it's quite nice. Nineteen forty. Back to Douglas's. Pictures on there. The one in wood. The plank. It's a Manx race replica. Complete with oil leaks. <laughs> John Player specials here. Look at that. 1972 John Player Norton 750. Tiny, isn't it? Sheen's last winner at the Manx, Manx replica. This is Britain's great road racing hero, Barry Sheen, won his 1976 and 77 500 World Championships on foreign machines. And when he returned to the track decades later, he rode a newly made version of the most classic British racer, the single cylinder Manx Norton, and scored two wins at the Manx at Donington Park in classic sport races for the MotoGP. Some history, isn't it? What got here? This is an unusual looking one. Yeah. It's been to the uh, Goodwoods Festival Theo of Speed. Oh, is it? Yeah. This Jap. 100 miles an hour. Wow. These are all matchless, they've got the. Uh, Hit the symbol on the side, haven't they? Mm. Another thousand cc matchless McAvoy built for Brooklands. We saw earlier. So Rally TT, one of the first motorcycle race held at Donington Park, ridden by Speedway ace Squib Burton. <laughs> and a 500cc Rickman matchless, a thumper for experts. They did a twin version as well. Rudgy, Rudgy Whitworth, twin. Where do you go now? <laughs> um, probably, but we came up there, didn't we? So yeah. down here. Down here, but probably want to look at the triumphs, really, don't we? Valmoto Triumphs 2003, TT winning team. Yeah, all the same team, aren't they? Taylor made race in Saxon Triumph. Seventy-one, seven fifty, Triumph. This was for this was prepared for the uh, twenty-four hour race, the Boulder Door. Boulder Door. Looks like they bolted these lights on as well, because that was for the twenty-four hour race. 
took a, fra a fared off fare in style <laughs> gravy and lice on the front. <laughs> Robert Dunlop achieved a Norton double in Ireland's North West 200 while TT success, which eluded the rotary, came closer with Dunlop's third in the F1 event and Norton placing second in the senior. It's just talking about Norton's return to racing. JPS glory years, 1991. Here's a rotary engine. Oh, look at that. 1991 Norton. Oh, Haslam. No, I've noticed is the later ones they make a big thing of where the tyres are. Yeah. So they've got Michelin on them, and those Triumphs they've got Pirellis. Yeah. There's oh, yeah. big signs on them, whereas the original one it was just the yeah. Well, I bike, mean, wouldn't it? Tyres became a big thing in all, yeah. sort, all forms of racing, didn't they? It's like Formula One, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So just trying to read all of this here. Probably best. Quite a lot of. It history here. I think you could probably just come and look at some of the uh, racing history, couldn't you? Yeah. Look at that. Exhaust on the back of that. And the candleless rear suspension. A lot of the original bikes didn't have uh, any suspension on the back. 1949 Manx 30M Garden Gate Manx. Ridden by William Dunlop in the in 2015 Classic TT. This one. Yeah. It's got Dunlop tyres on it. Yeah. Yep. Norton's final glory. Yeah, no, it's really good. Oh, it's more here. <laughs> Have we looked down here? I don't remember. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. The trouble you forget what you've seen, don't you? I know. That's huge. Absolutely huge. I'm 800 sort of bikes. 800 bikes. I'm not going to count them all. Well, good do. <laughs> I think if you're looking, if you're into bikes and you really want a good day out, then you could spend all day here. I mean, we, we know nothing about motorbikes, confess, but the oh, these history old ones here. are fascinating, aren't they? With the, yeah. What is that? It's a leather belt drive. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wow. And it was at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Mm. It's a six horsepower Norton Twin, winner of the very first Isle of Man TT. Oh, was it? Yeah. What it says there, I've got a horn on the front. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to use because this is going to be rather a long uh, bit of video, but yeah, I, I found it absolutely fascinating. So yeah. if you did, give us a thumbs up, remember to subscribe, and we'll catch up with you in the next one. Yeah, and here's, here's the Bruff Superiors. It's a 1911 Bruff Superior, three yeah. and a half horsepower. And then you've got a 1925 Bruff Superior SS80. And then the 1930 Bruff Superior. That, that was the one that... Yeah, it says mentions in there. Yeah. George Bruff produced several memorable exotic machines, such as the Austin engine, four with rear wheels, twin rear wheels, 
but it was the SS-100 that is remembered by most enthusiasts, the one that appeared at Olympia and the last one left the works in 1940. And most best known is probably uh, the best devotee was Colonel T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, between 22 and his death in 1935, Lawrence owned seven Bruffs, which six were model SS-100s and his writings contain many passages referring to the pleasure of riding these big twins. The type of publicity was invaluable to George Bruffett. It can't be overstated just how big a celebrity Lawrence was in the twenties. Unfortunately, it's also well documented that he met his untimely death on a quiet road in Dorset while riding one of his beloved SS 100s. couple of Edwardian tourers. Super tourers. Super tourer. Yeah. Wilkinson Tack Series 3 on the right. The leather armchair. And a Wilkinson TMC Series 5 over there. Yeah, I know. Incredible. <laughs>